Starting from this week, we'll talk about an advanced yet exciting topic, namely inheritance. So there's a long story to tell about inheritance. So that's why we're going to stay in this topic for the coming few weeks. So just sit tight and enjoy. Let's now look at the learning outcomes at the end of the whole story about inheritance. We want to talk about some alternative designs to begin with about what if you don't use inheritance? What kind of design principles can you violate? And we'll uh, talk about for using inheritance for code reuse. I would say that's what people would typically talk about inheritance to say you can avoid code duplicates, which is definitely a good thing, but there's more to it at a deeper, uh, at a deeper level. We want to talk about the deeper level about static types, expectations, and also dynamic types. And we'll talk about polymorphism and at, uh, from different angles. We'll start with uh, what polymorphism really means in terms of variable assignments, especially for reference variables. Polymorphism only uh, occur in the case of reference variable assignments. And also method arguments and return values. That's the a little bit more advanced uh, context to talk about. And also we talk about dynamic binding. Uh, so the polymorphism and dynamic binding, it will be the biggest two takeaways uh, for the inheritance lecture. But of course, other things are also important to actually build up the understanding about polymorphism and dynamic binding. And we'll also talk about typecasting. Typecasting is also a quite a tricky topic. I'll try to give you as complete as possible the story. And then from there, we can also talk about the, uh, the follow up topic, which is about generics, which will be uh, the, the next lecture. But we'll see. Okay. All right, so let's now talk about the running example that we're gonna use uh, for the rest of the lecture. There will be two running examples we wanna use. One is about the student management system, which I'll present to you. The other one is about a smartphones example, which uh, we'll see very soon. I want you to pause the video now and then look at uh, this problem description about a student management system, that's the entire problem description. Spend about two or three minutes uh, on the problem description, and then this is the task what I want you to think about to sketch some solution. And then we'll discuss at least two solutions that would not involve the inheritance, and then we'll talk about their uh, pros and cons. So your task would be write Java classes that will satisfy the above problem statements, and also at the runtime, you want to make sure each type of students either residents or non-resident students must be able to register a course and also calculate their tuition fee accordingly, depending on whether they use prim, uh, premium rates or discount rate. Okay, so now pause the video and read, uh, read through carefully the problem description. All right, assuming that you thought about it, so now you should have a piece of paper sketch with your initial design of Java classes, attributes and methods. Let's now compare your solution with my take. I have identified the following key phrases in the text, like uh, each one of them will be turned into either a class or an attributes or a method, either accessor or mutator. So let's now go a little bit more de in more detail about how the uh, identification for the key phrases, and then we'll speak about the first two designs without using inheritance. The principle I followed is a very general one, which you can also use. Number one, for every relevant noun, so notice that I emphasize the word uh, relevance. So you don't necessarily have to turn every noun into the class or a or an attribute or an accessor. That'll be too much, right? So you have to judge. So the judgment is really based on your experience or sometimes simply trial and error. So each uh, each relevant noun will be turned into class or attributes or accessor, and also each relevant verb will be turned into mutator. So again, let me emphasize the term relevant. It's really important to know about. Okay, relevant. Okay, and it really depends on your experience and also trial and error. Okay, let's now see the, uh, the key phrases. Let's now see what classes I can uh, turn. Uh, I can actually uh, infer from the problem description. A student management system apparently is going to store a collection of students, so that, that should definitely be, uh, be turned into a class. And also we got resident students, and also non-resident students. So these are also candidates for classes, okay? What about attributes? For attributes, in the case of resident students, we definitely got premium rates. And in the case of non-resident students, we got discount rate. So these are the two uh, obvious attributes you can uh, you can create. So what about methods? For example, here you can see 
uh, here we got calculating the tuition for a student. So it's definitely sound like a uh, like a method you can actually uh, uh, obtain. But let's not worry about whether that should be accessor or mutator. It looks more like an accessor because you simply just do some calculation. And also you can do uh, register for a particular uh, for a particular student in that way you are definitely going to modify the list of courses for the student so that sounds more like a mutator and let's see what else we actually got another two possible uh attributes as well for each students we have name and also we got the uh list of registered courses of course the course itself should also be turned into a specific class but we didn't really have much description about the uh, the course in the problem description but we'll see uh, some assumption later when we uh, move on to the design all right but one thing to note the name and also a list of graduate uh, re uh, registered courses these two attributes should be shared by both kinds of students right let me just uh, mention that so name and also registered courses these two attributes they should be like a common attributes. Okay, so here they should be the common attributes. Meaning that for both resident students and also non-resident students, both of them should have name and also registered courses. On the other hand, for discount rate and also premium rates, they are the student-specific uh, attributes, meaning that depending on whether they are resident students or non-resident students, uh, you can only, you should really uh, use one, but not the other, okay? That's also quite obvious once you read through the description, okay? So these are applicable to only one kind of students. It's actually very important uh, properties you, you really want to satisfy in your design. And for discount rate, it's going to be applicable for non-resident students. And for premium rates, it's applicable to resident students. All right, it's a very important uh, page for you to really pay attention to because we're going to reuse uh, the same example for uh, discussing the inheritance ideas throughout the, uh, the lecture. Okay. Anyway, I'll leave you to that. And whenever you got any doubts about the uh, problem description, you should always refer back to this page over here. Let's now talk about the first design.